ഓം വക്രതുണ്ടമഹാകായൻ സൂര്യകോട്ടിസമപ്രഭ നിർവിഘ്നം കുരു മേ ദേവ ു സർവതി നമസ്തുഭ്യം പരദേ കാമരൂപിണി വിദ്യാരംഭം കരശ്യാമി സിദ്ധർഭവത്ത മേ സദാ ഗുരുർബ്രഹ്മ ഗുരുർവിഷ്ണു ഗുരുർദേവോ മഹേശ്വര ഗുരു സാക്ഷാ പരം ബ്രഹ്മ തസ്മൈ ശ്രീ ഗുരവേ നമ ഓം സഹനോ സഹനോ ഭുനക്തു സഹവീര്യങ്കരവാവഹൈ തേജസ്വിനാവധിതമസ്തുമാവിദ്വിഷാവഹൈ ഓം ശ്രീ പരമാത്മനെ നമ ഓം ശ്രീ പരമാത്മനെ നമ അഥ തൃതീയോധ്യായ അഥ തൃതീയോധ്യായ the topic of the third chapter is karma yoga so which we started reading the chapter begins with the question of arjuna if for moksha sanyasa is the means then why do you engage me in karma and that to this ghora karma this yuddha karma that is the question it's going to come it's not it not it come it now for moksha what is required is sanyasa sanyasa meaning sarva karma sanyasa that is gnanam so arjuna understood sanyasa that is renunciation giving up of karma is the means for moksha then why do you engage in karma so that is the, the question we have to read from knowledge alone is adequate of adequate for moksha this question on the part of arjuna is because of his confusion with regard to what sanyasa is is it ashrama sanyasa or sarva karma sanyasa ashrama sanyasa that is chaturutta ashrama sanyasa ashrama where a person after vanaprastha ashrama takes to sanyasa ashrama and commits himself exclusive to vedanta sadhanam shravanam mananam vidyasanam or the person can continue in rasta ashrama and pursue also so the lifestyle doesn't matter what matters is gnanam sanyasa sarva karma sanyasa that is only by gnanam knowledge the knowledge only liberate liberates not the the lifestyle so lifestyle is immaterial whatever may be the lifestyle the goal is moksha that can be achieved through a life of igrasta or through the life of sanyasa ashrama so arjuna's confusion here with regard to what sanyasa is therefore the question comes knowledge alone is adequate for moksha arjuna's confusion was based on his incorrect understanding of renunciation sanyasa Krishna seems to have dismissed the pursuit of karma for good by not allowing it to be considered in the pursuit of moksha. Therefore, sannyasa had to be the answer. Karma cannot give moksha. Therefore, sannyasa alone gives moksha. If sannyasa alone gives moksha, then why do you engage me in karma? That is a doubt. At the same time, however, Krishna had praised karma. This apparent contradiction caused Arjuna to ask, what exactly should I do? He did not think of pursuing both karma and moksha because nowhere in the second chapter did Krishna mention combining them. There is no jnana karma samuchaya. So, there is no combination. 
some karma and moksha did not think of pressing both karma and moksha for moksha it is sadhanam is jnanam jnanam is by sanyasa so there is nowhere it's mentioned that karma and jnanam should be mixed up for moksha there is no such idea jnana karma sanyasa samuchaya knowledge is adequate for moksha moksha doesn't depend on any karma this not because it is not something that is created it is not something which is produced in time being the very nature of the atma moksha is already accomplished siddha vishaya siddha vishaya vishayatva therefore only jnanam it is praptasya prapti hi apraptasya prapti vishaye karma karmanah apekshah bhavati karmanah apekshah asti apraptasya prapti vishaye it is siddhasya siddhihi praptasya praptihi vittasya vittihi moksha is already accomplished the self is already liberated already free and needs only to be recognized as such therefore knowledge alone is adequate for moksha and after knowledge karma also is not required because the person is happy with himself or herself or as he or she is what karma is to be done then and for what purpose doing karma for the pleasure of it is not go- what is being discussed here to do karma merely for the sake of pleasure of it means that one may or may not do it some people will do karma and enjoy themselves while others may not do any karma at all and still enjoy themselves if you do something for the enjoyment of it there is no question of doing it as a bounden duty no banda therefore you need not do it or you may do it but for moksha why should you do karma when all that is required is knowledge if knowledge is adequate then you must pursue only that knowledge thus from what lord krishna had said so far it looked to arjuna as though knowledge was the prime pursuit but it was also very clear to arjuna that he had been commanded to perform action where he said he said tasmad utishta kaunteya yuddhaya krutan nischaya he said second chapter 37th shloka so therefore therefore the first dose of teaching contained the second chapter was confusing to arjuna who was already confused when the teaching began in an attempt to resolve his confusion he asked krishna to describe his tatvaragna a wise person this was an indirect question in that by knowing exactly what is the prajna was arjuna thought he would know whether it was knowledge or karma that would make him wise and, and therefore free in response lord krishna did not mention karma at all he talked only about self mastery and knowledge he never said that one who does karma becomes as the prajna all of krishna's descriptions of a wise person implied knowledge alone he had said that what is night for the ignorant is day for the wise yadishasura bhutana and what is night for the wise is a day for the ignorant tasyam jagrati sayami in this way he talked about two divisions that of the wise and that of the ignorant the vision of one who is ignorant being different from the vision of one who is wise from all that krishna had told him arjuna received the confirmation that knowledge was adequate for moksha there was no question of moksha requiring a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of karma a little bit of this and, and a little bit of that moksha after all is not like an english trifle or granola only knowledge is necessary and all other little bits are useless thus arjuna concluded if knowledge alone is going to liberate me then the pursuit of knowledge is enough if knowledge is adequate karma never comes into the picture neither before knowledge nor after knowledge because this was arjuna's thinking he had a doubt to rise thus when krishna finished talking arjuna asked his question there are two types of questions one is a question that is asking for an explanation that is called prashna in sanskritam prashna what is a wise person it is such a question another type of question involves doubt doubt samshaya which comes in the form of does the siddha prajna walk talk sit etc or not only when there are two or more opinions about a topic is there a possibility of a doubt 
throw the Gita Arjuna raised doubts and also ask questions involving definitions or descriptions. When Arjuna wanted to know what a wise person was, he was not expressing a doubt, although he may have done, he may have had one. He only wanted to know what is sannyasa, for example. It's not a doubt. It is purely a question asking for a definition. But when Arjuna asked which was better, sannyasa or karma yoga, he was expressing a doubt. Here at the beginning of the third chapter, he raised a doubt, a samshaya. Therefore, the third chapter begins with the words of Arjuna. Let us chant this. Arjuna Vuvacha. Arjuna Vuvacha. Yaya si chet karmanaste. Yaya si chet karmanaste. Mata buddhir janardana. Mata buddhir janardana. Tat kim karma nikore ma. Tat kim karma nikore ma. Niyo jayasi keshava. Niyo jayasi keshava. E janardana. Janan. Arda yeti iti janardana. The one who destroyed the asura. Jana. Janardana. Or uh, the Jana, we can take it as a it is Sambodhana. Janan Ardayati. Ardayati Nashayati. Vinashayati. It is Janardana. It's the name of the Lord, the Janardana. I think the Sambhadana came before also, the Janardana. Yeah, Janardana, Madhusudana, Arisudana. I think they are given. Janan Ardayati. Jana is not a Rakshasa. Jana, the Jana is people. Janan Ardayati means he is a Karma Pala Data. Ardayati. <clears throat> Ardayati meaning he because he's a karma pala data, whatever karma the people does, he gives that karma pala. So karma pala, if it is a papa karma, then he enjoys pain. He, 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 he therefore papa. Uh, jana we can take it as a asura also. Jana jana uh, ardayati, yes. Jana ardana. We can take it as Asura also, or we can take it as the Jana, the people to whom uh, he is a, uh, he, he is the Karma Pradata. So, in keeping with the Karma Pala of the people, karma, in keeping with the Karma of the people, he offers Karma Pala, he is a Karma Pradata. So, when that is a Papa Karma, then, then that is to be experienced by the doer of the Karma. If it is Punya Karma, then the Karma Pala in the form of Sukham to be experienced by the people. Therefore, Janardana is Karma Pala Dhata. That meaning you can take. Ardana means Ardayati, Nashayati. Ardayati, Nashayati, Tiyartaha. Janardana, Ardana. Anyway. So here it is Sambodhana, Akaranta Shabda, Akaranta pulling her Janardana Shabda, like Rama Shabda, Janardana, 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 it is Rupo, a Janardana. Jayasi Chet Karmanaste Matha Buddhihi, Jayasi, superior, greater, it's a comparative degree, Jayasi. If karma compared to karma, buddhi hi, jnanam, buddhi means jnanam, knowledge. Knowledge is greater according to you, te mata, according to you, your opinion. Tat gore karmani kim maam yo yasi. If that is so, why do you engage me in gore karma, maam yo yasi? Why do you engage in karma, what karma, gore karma, this yuddha karma. So therefore, in this Yuddha Karma, 
which is not a pleasant karma, why do you engage me? It is the question. Therefore, if jnanam is greater than karma, then why should I perform karma? And that too, this gaur karma. Shouldn't I directly follow jnanam? Shouldn't I directly take sannyasa? That is the question. Arjuna said, O oh, Janardana, if your contention, mata, tava, mata, tava, tava, mata, tava, mata, according to you, your contention is that knowledge is better than action. If your contention is knowledge is better than action, then why do you, Niyo Jagasi, impel me into this Gora Karma, gruesome action? O oh, Keshava. Arjuna addressed Lord Krishna here as Janardana. A name for the Lord, which means one who opposes the law of karma by giving the fruits of wrong action to the performer of the action. So, mainly wrong action. So, that's why it is karma paladata. Wrong karma results in pain, to come immediately or later. Therefore, janardana. Immediately or later. Krishna's contention, as Arjuna saw it, that was that the pursuit of knowledge. And the knowledge are better than or superior to action, karma. Action being referred to here was no ordinary action, such as performing a ritual or cooking. It was a terrible, gruesome action involving bloodshed and the destruction of many people. Therefore, therefore, Arjuna asked Krishna, why do you engage me in this terrible action? If with reference to moksha, knowledge is superior, jayasi, Karmanaha buddhihi jayasi. If knowledge alone is going to give me moksha, then why are you asking me to do karma? And that to ghor karma. In Arjuna's understanding, Krishna was asking him to act. And that is evident from the last chapter. He said, Tasmadu tishta kaunte yudha yatrutanischeha iti. Therefore, it's very evident. And also, it is going to say further in the following chapter. So, it is very evident. Krishna was asking to act. But at the same time, was praising knowledge and its pursuit. Krishna seemed to be saying that knowledge liberates. But at the same time, he was asking Arjuna to do karma. And terrible karma at that. Therefore, Arjuna, want, Arjuna wanted to be sannyasi. And Krishna seemed to be pushing into the ring into fight. He had not even signed a contract with him. He had asked only Krishna that be his driver, not his agent, not his agent who, uh, who would arrange fighting matches for him. It was Arjuna's question, why are you asking me to perform this terrible action? Extends into next verse as well. The next shloka, let us read. Vyamishrenevavakena Yami Shene Vavakena Buddhim Moha Yasiva Me Buddhim Moha Yasiva Me Tade Kam Vadanis Chitya Tade Kam Vadanis Chitya Nis Chitya the type printing it. Ye Nashre Yoga Mapnuyam Sentences which seem to be confusing. Self-contradictory. Buddhi moha yasiva me. Buddhim Hoga Yasi. You seem to be confusing the Buddhi. Yami Shre Neva Vakyana. Buddhim Hoga Yasi Vame. With the words, the Vakya sentences self contradicting. You seem to be confusing my Buddhi. You tell me one thing. Tadekam Vadanishitya Yena. Shteyakam Apniya. By which? I will get this yes. It is. With the words that are seemingly contradictory. Not contradictory. Seemingly contradictory. 
you appear to be confusing my mind arjun krishna doesn't confuse he confuses he is not a teacher it you seem to be confusing appear to be confusing and the statements are not contradictory seemingly contradictory having decided which is better tell me one thing by which i will i shall gain liberation moksha azura did not say that krishna's words were self contradictory but that were seemingly contradictory in arjuna's understanding there was contradiction but even knowing this he did not say to krishna you confused me with self contradictory words which would have been an accusation he didn't do that here we are given indication how of how one should talk in such situations when arjuna said by words which are seemingly contradictory you seem to be confusing me he meant that in fact krishna's intention was to confuse him we know that there is often accusation involved in a dialogue between the two people if your perception is that uh, that a person did, did this or that to you you may say you did this to me the person becomes then defensive and will not accept your statement you then feel that your feelings are invalidated that you are not understood the other person also feels that he or she is accused and not understood at all in other words there is not only no communication but also miscommunication here arjuna's use of the word give as though it reveals an important principle in communication never never evoke the defensive person the one with whom you are communicating arjuna was not accusing krishna of confusing him now did he say that his words were contradictory instead he said krishna's words seem to be contradicting themselves and therefore arjuna seem to confuse him so krishna seem to confuse him this means that arjuna did not think that krishna was confusing him only that this was how he perceived it he says my perception is that i have not understood what you have taught because you seem to praise knowledge moksha is not produced by karma for a wise person all the karmas and the results that are mentioned in the veda are like a well that has been completely flooded over by water this is a shloka in the second chapter yava nartha udapane that the shloka translation the second chapter we saw 46th shloka yava nartha udapane sarvata sampradodake tavan sarveshu vedeshu brahmanasya vijaratah for a wise person all the karmas and results that are mentioned in the veda are like a well that has been completely flooded over by water of what use is a well water and water is everywhere you need not search for the well when the water is when the river is dry the well water is useful but when the river is overflowing and the well is underneath it you are not going to go looking for the well because it is not going to be of any use to you similarly for the person who knows himself or herself to be full free from limitation of what use is an object of security and happiness except for its empirical value this was how krishna had praised a wise person by praising the wise the wisdom is praised krishna had praised wisdom in this way and, and had made it very clear that knowledge was quite adequate for moksha so arjuna told krishna that he was confused by being asked to perform action arjuna's confusion was based on his conclusion that either karma or knowledge should be able to take him to shreyas karma action is something that can be produced something that is born out of one's will whereas moksha cannot be produced four types of results can be produced by karma something can be created by you utpannam something that has already created can be modified or destroyed by you vikaryam something can be cleansed or purified by you samskaryam and a place that is already there can be reached apyam so four types of karma four types of results karma can produce that is it can utpadyam samskaryam sams samskaryam adhikaryam and apyam four types of karma four types of results karma can produce whether actions are worldly or religious they can produce only one of these four types of results 
Here, however, we are talking about moksha, which cannot be produced. Nasti akrutaha kratera. If it could be produced, then it would be lost also. If, for example, moksha could be achieved by purifying the atma, then it would take no time at all for the atma to become impure again. You would have to scrub it every day. Nor can the atma be reached because atma is myself. It is not away. Therefore, there is no apium. It is not something I have to reach because it is not away from myself. Therefore, reaching it is impossible. Modification of Atma is also not Moksha. Samskarya of Atma, that is also not Moksha because Atma is ever Shuddha. What can be modified is subject to time. And so, Moksha gained also will be lost. Also, in order for, in order for the Atma to be subject to modification, it would have to be an object objectifiable by me. But because the Atma is myself, it cannot be an object in my hands. Therefore, it is not something I can modify. The self is already accomplished and moksha is identical with it. But Krishna was asking Arjuna to do karma. Why? Therefore, Arjuna asked him to settle on one or the other, either knowledge or karma. If it was to karma, he wanted to know why. The nature of knowledge. Knowledge is not something that is produced and is therefore different from karma. Knowledge is knowing things as they are. To know that an unclean object is unclean or that a clean object is clean is knowledge, jnana. To know an untruth as untruth or a truth as truth is also jnana. To know the real satyam as satya is jnana and to know the unreal mitya as mitya is also jnana. Because knowledge is as true as the object. It is not dependent upon your will. I cannot decide that this is how knowledge should be. I can only see the object as it is. Nor can knowledge be modified by my will. The will can set you up to pursue knowledge, but it cannot interfere in the perception of an object. This being the case, jnana and karma are entirely two different things. Arjuna wanted Krishna to tell him whether knowledge or karma would liberate him. Tell me whether I will gain shayas by karma or by jnana. Tell me which one will do it. Don't tell me that knowledge is all right and karma is also all right, that I can go this way or that way. Suppose you go to one teacher who tells you that you should perform karma. Then you decide to go to another teacher for a second opinion, just as you might if a doctor you have consulted recommends surgery. The second teacher may say, what karma? You should do yoga. Yet another teacher might say, you, you must pursue knowledge. It is to be expected that if you go to three different teachers, each one may you give a different set of instructions. You then have to find out for yourself which one, which of, one of the three is proper, which teacher is right. There may be a fourth person who is right. It is also understandable that the same teacher may give different advice to different students. One student may ask, do they marry or not? And be told that he or she should marry. Another student may be told not to marry because he or she doesn't know how to take care of himself or herself. The person is already a dukkhi. And this making another person a dukkhi also by marrying prematurely. Thus a teacher advise his or students differently. Arjuna's confusion about knowledge and karma. In the Gita, there are only two types of people involved. Krishna the teacher. There are only, sorry, two, there are only two people involved. Krishna the teacher and Arjuna the student. It seemed to Arjuna that Krishna was saying, knowledge liberates, therefore do karma. Only one student was involved here, Arjuna. It looked as if he was being told, knowledge is okay and karma yoga is okay. Arjuna was therefore understandably confused by Krishna's seemingly contradictory words. There was a similar situation in the, in the epic Ramayana between Prahastha and Ravana. Ravana had kidnapped Rama's wife Sita. This was probably the first kidnapping ever reported and was definitely a federal case. Rama, the king, who was a king, took the case into his own hands. When negotiations, negotiations for Sita's return were unsuccessful, Rama declared war on Ravana. Ravana had a minister, Pragastha. Summoning him, Ravana asked Pragastha, Ravana asked, Pragastha, what do you think? Should I give Sita back to Rama? I think we are inviting trouble by keeping her here. To which Pragastha replied, Yes, Maharaj, you should give her back, because we are definitely inviting danger by doing otherwise. We all will be destroyed. Here in this, Ravana became angry and said, Are you saying that we will be destroyed by this Rama, a mere mortal, an ordinary human being? Are you telling me, Ravana, who has ten heads and great powers, that this puny little Rama is going to destroy me? Never, Maharaj, never. Pragastha replied, 
Rama is a nobody. He has only two hands and two legs. With his bows and arrows, what can he possibly do to you? Then Ravana said, But I am told that this Rama is not an ordinary mortal. Sarastha's reply came promptly. He said, Maharaj, do you know what I have heard about this Rama? They say that he is an avatar, an incarnation of the Lord himself, but not an ordinary mortal. Growing ever angrier, Ravana asked, Do you think that Rama and Lakshmana with these monkeys can beat us? We can beat anybody. When I am the Lord of the three worlds, are you saying that these two are going to destroy me? Never, Maharaj. Rasta replied, How can these two fellows with their monkeys do anything to you? Ravana then said, But I am told that the monkey Anuman is a very powerful fellow. Maharaj, there is not only one Anuman. Rasta responded, There are thousands of monkeys. Some of them are as great as Anuman. There are so many of them that if they all come here, we are done for. Then Ravana asked, Are we afraid of monkeys? What? Maharaj exclaimed Prasta, of course, we are not afraid of monkeys. Varuna, the god of water, comes and waters our gardens. The god of air, Vayu, comes and sweeps our floors. Why should we be afraid of these monkeys? It would seem that Prasta had written a book equivalent to how to win friends and influence people. The advantage of being a Prasta is that in every cabinet reshuffle, his name always appears on the top of the list because he says yes to everything. A teacher's answers question. Such pleasantries may be acceptable to those who are anxious to maintain a position. But in Arjuna's case, the relationship was one of teacher and student. I am, I am your student, Arjuna had told Krishna. A teacher should not be afraid to tell a student what is true and what is not true. If a teacher doesn't tell you what is true, and who else is going to do it? Arjuna wanted Krishna to tell him what was true and not true. Therefore, he was not looking for pleasantries. He wanted to be told what was the one thing that would give him moksha and did not want to hear about anything in between. He did not want to be told that karma is good and knowledge is also good because he did not see it that way, even though it looked as though this was what Krishna was saying. Arjuna was as though saying to Krishna, from your own words, I understand that knowledge liberates and karma binds. Why then do you want me to bound to this karma? Every karma I perform only makes the knot more complicated. If I, am able, if I am to resolve this knot, this type of samsara, a life of limitation, for which I need and want moksha, then I need to pursue knowledge. But you are asking me to act. act. But you are asking me to do karma. Therefore, you must have something in mind. Please tell me what is what it is, because I don't understand. This then was the thinking behind Arjuna's question, which was really a doubt, a samshaya. And therefore, Krishna answered him in the next shloka. But it's from there the teaching starts. Important shloka follows. No case means Dvida Anishta. We will see this shloka in the next class. So we will stop with the question of Arjuna. Om Pur Namadav Pur Namidam Pur Pur Namadachade Purnasya Bhut Navadaya Bhut Nameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om Sanyavadaha Sanyavadaha